Hi there, this is Kevin with Data School. You're about to watch an excerpt from a private Q&A webcast that I do every single month. This question is about the resources I use to stay up to date as a data scientist. Stick around to the end to find out how you can join these webcasts in the future. Thanks. First question I'm going to answer from Victor Yang. He asks, what sites slash people slash resources do you follow regularly to stay up to date on the latest data science and machine learning trends? Any personal favorites? Thanks. Okay. He asked specifically about trends. Um, and I tend not to focus on what you might call the latest trends. My main interest uh, as a data scientist is getting really good at a small set of high quality tools. And personally, I feel like I can only be good at so many tools. Um, and so I try to limit that as much as possible so that I can go deep um, rather than wide. That's my general philosophy on learning things. Um, trends, uh, it's, it's always hard to tell if a trend is going to become, um, like turn into something really useful. And my feeling is that when something becomes really useful, like here's this new algorithm, for example, um, when something becomes really useful, it will eventually become part of a tool. And that's when I'll start using it. So I'm much more into learning things that I can use than um, theoretical things that aren't ready for widespread usage because I'm not going to build the tool. I'm not going to add the new algorithm to scikit-learn. It's not what I would be good at. It's not my interest. That's not to say that new things aren't of interest to me. Um, I am interested when someone comes out with a new tutorial on, on, on something I'm interested in comes out with a new technique, but very often, like I find that the greatest gains for myself are from getting better at a lot of the techniques that already exist and a lot of the tools that already exist. So that's why I don't focus much on trends. Now, all of that being said, I do have resources to recommend, and you can think of them as ways to keep up with trends if that's of interest to you, or you can think of them as ways to learn new things. Um, so I'm just kind of taking the question a little broader, and I've pulled up some tabs of um, things that I follow. Basically, the way I get articles and stuff, tutorials, is through email newsletters and through Twitter. Um, and so that's what I'm going to share. Let me, um, see if I can pull up my screen here. Okay, great. So, uh, I'm just going to briefly go through some email newsletters that I, uh, subscribe to, and then I'll talk about people I follow. Um, I'll provide links to these, so you don't have to, um, write it all down if you like, but, uh, data elixir is a newsletter I follow. Um, the thing, one thing I really like is it's, pretty well curated. The guy, Lon, who does it, he actually writes all these descriptions and he's thoughtful about what he chooses. Um, I'm not interested in a lot of it, but um, he definitely picks some good stuff and he curates really nicely. The next one I read is Python Weekly. And obviously it's not um, focused on data science, but I do like that it's really quick to kind of scan through and um, usually the title and a, a, tight, a small description will give me enough to decide if it's of interest. And because I'm interested in Python in general, as well as data science, um, there's often uh, something in these that I'm interested in. Um, and there's often a lot, I mean, a lot of the articles turn out to be about data science because that's such a hot area in Python. So the second one is Python Weekly. Data Science Weekly is another newsletter I read. These descriptions are not written. They're, they're just copy and pasted from the article, and they're usually not a great description of what's in there. So I have a little trouble kind of scanning through these. And I would say the bar for quality isn't as high as Data Elixir. So I don't, um, I keep, I keep subscribing to it. Um, and sometimes there's something in here that I like, but often 
the really good stuff is also in Data Elixir and Python Weekly anyway. Um, but if you want a little more um, and more variety, Data Science Weekly might be of interest to you. Uh, next, I was going to talk about is Real Python. So, uh, Real Python um, is not technically about data science, but they end up having some uh, data science related articles. And obviously, Python articles is their theme. Um, it's run by Dan Bader, who you might know. Uh, he took over the site maybe six, six, nine months ago or something. Um, but their tutorials, what they're known for is like really in depth tutorials, which speaks to me because. I'm much more interested in something in depth than like a surface treatment. Um, so I like, and they have a nice newsletter. I, I didn't have a, a screenshot of that particular newsletter, um, but there's a link on there. It's not this get Python tricks thing on the right. That's kind of a separate thing. So um, Python tricks is just like a trick, you know, every couple of days. But um, the actual real Python newsletter is what you're looking for if, if, if you're interested. The next one is brand new and it's Chris Moffitt's um, site, Practical Business Python. And he actually just started the newsletter. There's only been one issue, but I love his stuff in general. Um, and he does a lot of pandas, does a lot of visualization stuff. So I follow Practical Business Python as a site, but I prefer getting a newsletter because I don't really make the time to go, just go check sites. So it's brand new. He happens to also be part of Data School Insider. So hey, Chris, if you're watching, um, but great site. And we'll see what's actually in the newsletter, like what kind of formats it is. I'm mostly subscribed um, out of curiosity, plus because he'll surely mention anytime he publishes a new article. Okay, let's see. The other two things I do to keep up with what you might think of as trends or at least news is actually read the release notes for any packages I follow. Um, so especially scikit-learn and pandas, they have pandas especially has incredibly long and detailed release notes. Scikit-learn also has long release notes, but it's not as frequent and it's not as long. Um, but if you wanna keep up with a tool, you should actually read the release notes as things come out because you'll not only learn new capabilities, but they'll talk about improving something that you didn't even know existed. Um, and you'll just get a good exposure to the library. Okay. So um, in turn, that's, those are the, the, um, the newsletters I follow as well as the release notes. Since he asked about people I follow and I mentioned uh, Twitter is where I tend to hang out. Uh, I did want to show a, um, I made a small Twitter list of um, data scientists that I tend to find the most valuable Twitter content from. And I'll share a link to this. I just created this today. There's only eight people on it. Um, but, you know, very briefly, uh, Rachel Thomas is involved with Fast.ai. She, she helped to co-found it. Sebastian Roshka wrote a machine learning book and is pretty involved in scikit-learn. Jake Vanderplas wrote, um, has written a data science book, contributed NumPy and scikit-learn, talks a lot at conferences. Andy Mueller is a core contributor to scikit-learn. So I, if I follow him, I make sure I'll hear about scikit-learn releases and other content. Um, Randy Olson is huge on Twitter. Um, he runs the teapot package for auto automated machine learning, you might say, or uh, that's not quite the way I would describe it, but, um, and he's huge into data visualization. Uh, David Robinson is at data camp, but used to be at stack overflow and he tweets a lot. Um, Tom Augsburger is a pandas core contributor, um, and shares good content also works on Dask, I think. And then Ben, Ben Hamner is with Kaggle. He's the CTO and he just tweets a lot of interesting uh, and thought provoking things. So anyway, I'll share a link to this. These are the people I follow on Twitter and that's how I hear about most of the kind of interesting articles I find. Hope this video was helpful to you. If you'd like to join my monthly webcasts and ask your own question, sign up for my membership program at the $5 level by going to patreon.com slash dataschool. There's a link in the description below or you can click the box on your screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.